Look at that. Look at that fan on my hair. I spent hours setting that up just so I could get that rock star look for this video. The breeze, like Steve Vai, just shredding with the breeze in his hair. I just finished editing this video. I'm very excited, as you can tell. I am giving you my guitar knowledge as if you were my student. I'm just going to give you a straight up guitar lesson here. And I'm happy for you. We're going to, by the end of this video, you're going to have a melody that you created and it's going to be packaged in a one, four, five chord progression. And you're going to be, have the beginnings of a, of a beautiful song that you wrote. And it's also a Travis picking lesson, a beginner one. So if you're a beginner, stick around. This is perfect for you. But if you're more advanced, it, I, I hope, I think it will answer a lot of your questions about why do certain notes go with notes? How do you approach Travis picking? How do you think about it in songwriting? How do you see what's happening in other people's songs. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. We're going to do our thumb, implying the chords. Our fingers are going to do the melody. We're going to put it all together. I, I really think this is a valuable lesson for you guys. As you can tell, I'm excited. So let's just dive right into it. Mike's Music Method. I have a bunch of beginner tutorials, but they are all song-based, which I think is a lot of fun and exciting. But some people have more questions about the mechanics of it, the technique of it, the theory behind it, like how to think about finger picking when you're songwriting. Why does it work? How do you construct it? So that's what this video is for. I'm gonna give you what I think is a really great exercise that I give most of my beginning picking students that incorporates the basic thumb idea, but also giving them all the scale notes that are in there. So we're, we're implying a G chord and we'll play a G major scale. And from there, you can pick different melody notes, come up with different rhythms, but that those are the two components. Well, there's several components, but we have our thumb, which is always implying a chord. And then we have the scale, which is giving us the melody and it's combining those in a rhythmic fashion. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. You'll get a little theory, a little right hand technique, and then I'm gonna make you, and by the end of this video, you're gonna have written a nice little melody, and you're gonna finger pick it. It's gonna be beautiful, and it's just gonna open, open the, the doors of perception wide open, so you can go in through that deep tunnel into the unknown universe of creative finger picking and songwriting, and you're gonna be a world renowned guitarist by the time you're done with this video and exploring the caverns of the finger-picking world. Let's do it. I'm going to assume you know what a major scale is. If you don't, I have a video. It's an early one I made, so excuse the quality. But uh, it's called What the Heck is a Major Scale? I'll link it there. Um, but basically, any scale is built off this idea. I'm going to start in the third string, which is a G, open G. Now... Without getting into too much theory, you have your note, you go two frets, two frets, one, two, 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 one. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So starting note, two frets, two frets, one, two, 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 one. It's called a whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half. So that's how I think of it. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Or frets, it's two, two, one, two, 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 one. And that gives you a major scale. Now, of course, it's very impractical to have to do it on one string. So we break it apart and do it on different strings. When we are in the key of G, it looks like this. I'm doing open on the third string, second fret on the third string, do, re. Then we have second string open, open, one, three. Then we go to the first string, open, two, three. And you can think of it as numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight is an octave, so we're back at one, or eight, however you want to think about it. Or you can do solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. I think it's really important to do one of those systems. Solfege is great to sing, because they're all nice syllables. But if you're doing the number system, it's good to know, because you want to know the, the intervals of, right, the distance between the notes. So this is one to eight. It's an octave somewhere over the rainbow. Um, or you can do one, two, five. Do, do, do. So you get used to the sounds of all the different intervals and it's nice to know the relationship. So even when you're just playing the scale, you can practice it up and down, but also be aware of like one, two, one, two, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four, 
one, five. It's nice to be aware of the distances between all those notes in the scale. So those are all the notes in the key of G. Now songs sometimes leave keys or sometimes you get a borrowed chord or a chromatic note that, that you know, a note that comes chromatically through the melody. Don't worry about all of that stuff in folk music, the kind of stuff I'm doing on this channel. 95% of the time, 98% of the time, we're diatonic, diatonic, which means we're just within the key. So the melody comes from one of those seven notes. That's it. So here we're in the key of G. So what we're going to do is just start with a basic G chord. Now a G chord, without going into theory, has three notes. It's G, B, and D. Now, when we're doing our thumb part, we're just implying the G chord. I'm not gonna play all the notes of a G chord. I'm gonna play a G, which is the sixth fret, or sorry, sixth string, third fret, that's our G. And I can skip, I'm gonna skip to the fourth string, which is a D. So I'm playing a G and a D. I'm not playing the B, but it doesn't matter. Our ear hears that as a G chord, right? I'm implying a G chord. So that's what our thumb does. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know the thumb is always on the downbeat. It's kind of keeping the train going. So this may sound super simple, but this is a great thing to practice and try to like talk while you practice it. Keep the rhythm going, uh, you know, do some math problems in your head, have a conversation with your loved ones while you're doing it. It's a good way to annoy them. Of course, there's many ways to imply a G chord. You could do G to the next note, the B on the next string. Right, so play a G chord, but just play six to five. Because it's so low, that's a little bit muddier. This is way more spacious, gives more room. Now what Towns does a lot, he'll go all the way to the third string. So here we're just playing Gs. No B, no D, just playing the root of the chord. That's fine too. All of these things are fair game, and it's all up to you and your ear to determine what sounds the best. So now we have our rhythm, our implied G chord, and we have our melody. And finger picking is about putting those things together in a way that sounds good. So let's do that. Note, if you go to mikesmusicmethod.com, I will put a PDF of all of the tabs together and I will name it, let's name it um, G major Travis picking. So that way when you're done watching the video, you can print that out. You'll have the little scale. You'll have the chords that go along with this key my little melody and you'll have all that stuff as an example in one place to look at that way you can sit down follow the ideas and write out your own melody let's do it i can make a really long video on exact right hand technique but instead i don't know this guy but he has a fantastic video here all about posture and right hand technique and he's a classical player but there's a lot to be learned from these guys and you know, for hundreds of years, classical guitarists have been perfecting the art form way longer than, uh, you know, this kind of folk tradition of things. They're really specific and anal about it. So this guy's a great video. But in a nutshell, your guitar is up. If you're sitting, it's on the left leg. I'm going to go through this fast, but please, that 15-minute video that I linked to is, is worth every minute. Guitar is up. You're sitting like this. Your thumb this is what a lot of people get wrong. Your thumb is leading. Right, your thumb is closer to this where my hand is. You don't want to be like this. Your fingers should not be leading the way. So your thumb is leading the way. And the sensation you're looking for is you're closing. Your hand is closing. You're not pulling up from this first joint. Right, you don't want to be like lifting up from here. You're pushing up from this one right there. You're pushing down. And not that this always happens, but if you were to do a full follow through, your finger would end up touching your palm. Same for all these fingers, sorry, I'm messing up. <laughs> right, the follow through is my fingers touching the inside of my hand. So that's the sensation you wanna be going for. And that will fall into place only when your posture is right, when your thumb is leading. You don't wanna be doing this with these fingers out in front. Your fingers are gonna hit each other. It's just bad technique. I know that's gonna bore a lot of you guys. And like I said, that guy's video is just, he does a better job than I could. It's a really good video. Watch all that right hand stuff. When you do that, come back here. Before you get creative and do all these different cool things, we're just gonna play it really straight. So this is always pinned down, my ring finger there. What I'm gonna do is anytime I hit that sixth string, I'm gonna play a melody note. And I'm gonna play through all the melody notes. 
So pinch alone, pinch alone, pinch thumb alone, pinch thumb alone, pinch thumb alone. And this is going to get you used to all of your melodic options in that particular key of G major. So let's go through that really slow. I'm pinching six and three. I'm going to pinch the second note of the melody, which is that second fret on the third string. And then it's the thumb alone. Again, don't go through the whole thing. Maybe for a while you're just doing that open on the third string, then second fret on the third string. Do, re. The notes are G, A. The scale degrees are 1, 2. Then we're going to go to the third note of the melody which is open on the third string. All right, so I did the first three. Do, re, mi. Maybe try backwards. Mi, re, do. And already at this stage in the game, you can start to experiment and get creative. Whatever keeps it fun and engaging and gets you practicing, that's what you're aiming for. Right? There's no great, perfect exercise to get better at finger picking. It's whatever exercise you're, you find engaging, right? Like in a very active, engaging way, not like a passive kind of practice. So even with those three notes, we can get carried away. Even with this basic rhythm, I'm always doing pinch alone, pinch alone. Right? I can already come up with a kind of interesting melody. I'm playing the first one. One, one, two, one, three, three, two, one. We're already making music. So have, have fun with all these exercise and, uh, exercises. Make them your own. Be creative with them. But let's continue here. So we got pinch, six and three. Thumb along. Then I put my middle finger down. Six and three, pinch. Then I'm pinching six and two, and that second string is open. Then I'm gonna put my first finger down on the first fret of that second string. That's the fourth note there. Then I put my pinky down on the second string. Then I do open on the first string, pinching six and one. This is a little tricky if you're not using used to it. I put my middle finger down on the second fret of the first string to get that seventh scale degree, that F sharp. D. Then my pinky plays the octave. Back on G, octave higher. One more time, play it all the way through. Three, four. Middle finger down, second string open. First fret on the second string. Third fret on the second string. Open on the first string. Second fret with your middle finger, pinky. Then you would practice it backwards. Third fret, second fret, open on the first string pinky on the second string, first fret on the second string, open on the second, second fret, third string, then open third string. As far as the right hand goes, you know, I'm usually doing the index, and then when I get to the first string, I'll do the middle. Or maybe I'll do the index there and then switch to the middle. And when it's that slow, it doesn't matter too much, but you want to get used to using I would argue both your index and your middle, but again, even there, there's some guys that get crazy, including Merle Travis, the guy whose name Travis Picking, he only uses his index finger. I would say that's rare. If you want to do more arpeggios, you're going to want to do more than one finger. But that is the basic exercise, and now we'll get into more variations of it and to make it more exciting. But if that's enough for you, you know, stop the video, and that could be a week or two weeks worth of good practice getting that up to speed. Another thing you wanna do is uh, palm mute, right? Practice that. Backwards. One variation before we get it more interesting. Simply um, do the alone first and then the pinch. Alone. So the alone is on the sixth string and then you always pinch with the fourth string. Just to get used to a different rhythmic structure. The whole point is that you want to free up your mind and hand. You want to kind of make all of these patterns muscle memory so that 
it's muscle memory so you don't have to think about it and you can have more fun being creative like so so the end goal is this i'll give you a little example i'm just gonna make it up right i'm just gonna create a melody i know i'm doing this and i'm just gonna put notes in between get the idea it's really fun um, once you get it down it's you, you just you know you riff on it and you have fun on it and you'll get there I promise so let's go to the next step of, of kind of building to that point and eventually we will even change the chord but for now we're just going to exhaust this G position getting your brain and your hands used to all of these different kind of melodic and rhythmic ideas that make Travis picking Travis picking So far we've done all the downbeats, we're gonna do the upbeats. So think of, you have a floor, that's the downbeat. One, two, three, four. That's what your thumb is doing, always on the downbeat. It's what you bob your head to in music. The other one is the upbeat. You can think of, it's literally an up. One and two and three and four and. So you have eighth notes, and that's what syncopation is, playing more upbeats. Reggae is all upbeats, right? You groove on the upbeat. You kind of bob your head that way. That's why it's so happy. It's like uplifting, literally uplifting. Get it on the upbeat. One and two and three and four and. Listen to John Hurt. That's what makes John Hurt so happy is all these like unexpected accents and notes on the upbeat that just make it very jolly and cheery to listen to, very light. So that's what we're gonna do here. Let's do it. Before we were always doing pinch with the note. Here it's going to be in between. So I'm going to do thumb, index, thumb. Thumb and thumb. And that's that first melody note. I'm going to do the exact same kind of exercise. Put my middle finger down. Thumb and thumb. Right, that was do, re. Then thumb and thumb. That's the third string open there. Or sorry, that's the second string open there. The third note of the scale, the B. And you put your first finger down on that second string. I think you get the idea. If you practice that other scale enough, this shouldn't be too hard. You're just changing the rhythm. Thumb, do, re, mi, thumb and thumb, thumb and thumb. Six string open. Whoops. Yeah. Backwards. Getting used to all these on the upbeat. Here we're gonna make it more melodic. We're gonna put the melody in there more often with the rhythm. So I'm gonna pinch, pinch all on the first note. So that was my first do, do. Then I put my middle finger down, re, re. Then I go to the third melody note, mi, mi, fa, fa, so, so. Technique-wise, I'm not going to bust your butt about always alternating. This rhythm's slow enough where you can just do index, 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 middle, middle. Now the next thing we can do is to make the melody faster if your left hand is up for it yet. Uh, we're just going to change the note every single time. So I'm doing do, and then right away to re, mi, fa. So every time I'm doing a different melodic note, your thumb really has to be mechanical. Pinch, 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 pinch. It might be a tricky one. It really opens up your hand to play fairly often. I'm going to make you write your own little song soon. Not yet. We're almost there. But here I just want to say, take all those concepts and be playful with them. Right? Maybe for a while you're just doing all ands. Thumb, and, thumb, and. And then you move on to the next note. Go back to the first one. 
jump to one. That's, you know, not the next one in the sequence. So here you're, you're don't, you know, you don't want to think too much about like, oh, it's got to sound good. But you're starting to step outside of the boundaries of do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and back down. So jump around a little bit, get used to that, right? We're not always playing the notes up and down. Sometimes we're leaping. So do that. I don't want to say haphazardly, but don't, you know, don't worry about it sounding good yet. But just kind of putz around with that idea. Maybe you're doing it slower. Maybe they're all pinches. Get a little bit creative with it after you have the basics down of all that previous stuff I've shown you. And now let's get into the writing. Sit down with your guitar, spend five minutes, come up with a very simple melody in the key of G. And here's an example that right before I hit record, I just kind of came up with. That's it, simple. We can get into the reasons why it works. One of the reasons it can be so short and concise is because it ends on the G, which is our root, right? So we've got the scale degrees are five, four, three, two, three, one. And that one sounds conclusive because we're in the key of G and it is a G. We're not gonna overthink all that stuff in the video, but come up with a little melody. That's mine. So it's, I'll play it for you guys so we can do it together. And that's all on the second string. Three, one, oh. Then I do two on the third string. Back to open on the second string. And open on the third. Now what I'm going to do is put that within our G chord. Naturally, because I came up with the melody first, it's not all going to be on the downbeats. It's probably not all going to be syncopated. There's going to be a natural variation because that's the nature of a melody. Not all melodies will go to this rhythm. So it's da, down, down. If I do the up and down thing, right, we have one, two, three, and one, and boom. We have some upbeats in there. Dun, 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 dun. Again, I won't make you write it out and go into all the ups and downs. Try to feel it. So it's pinch, 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 and, and. Pinch, 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 and, and. Let's break that down really slow. Pinching six and two with my pinky down on that second string. Then I pinch again, but it's the fourth string first fret on that second string. So four and two I'm pinching, but I have my melody note there. Pinky index. Then I lift it. So we got three in a row, three pinches in a row. Then six and two. And then thumbs alone there. Da, da, da. Sometimes if you give your melody words, it's easier to remember. I like food, yes I do. Right, just a dumb little melody, it, it helps ingrain the rhythm. So we have, I like food. So it's pinch, 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 and the thumb along. And let's do the second half here. I put my middle finger down, second fret of the third string, pinching six and three. And then I'm immediately doing open on the second string. That's kind of quick. And then the thumb on the fourth string. Pinch, so yeah, pinching six and three. Immediately the second string with my middle finger and then open on the fourth. And then after that thumb on the fourth, I'm lifting my middle finger and playing the third string open.
things get tricky where it's hard for your brain. You gotta make sure your brain is really muscle memory those downbeats. Yes, I do. I like food. Yes, I do. So all together slow. This is what I want you to do with the melody you created. So again, pause the video, come up with a little cheesy melody in G. That might be too fast, keep it slow. It can be that simple. Da, 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 da. But then figure out where you're pinching, where you're playing the downbeats, where you're playing the syncopated upbeats. It's going to be different with every melody depending i think you get the idea right you're you just want to match the thumb with that little melody that you came up with and you put it onto a g chord and you already got a little something and now let's do the exciting next step youtubers well first off patrons thank you so much for supporting this channel it's amazing i can't believe that i mean i can believe it but it's um it just makes me super happy i i honestly think the value for value model is the way of the future. There's, I'm going to provide all this content for free, and those who can pitch in, you know, they can do it. And it's, I mean, it's just a great model. You're, everyone who's donating is being charitable because there's people who can't afford it right now, and they're able to get this great education for free on YouTube. So thank you, patrons. And for those of you who aren't subscribed, please consider, you know, one-time donation or, you know, 10 bucks a month, 5 bucks, 20 bucks, 50 bucks. Whatever you think this channel is bringing to you in value, please consider, even if all my subs just gave a buck a month, I could like, I mean, I'd still teach, but I would be, I would, I could make this my day job, you know, maybe teach less privately and do, I mean, I can bring you guys a video like every couple days. It'd be great. So consider that, you know, what, what are these videos worth for you? A buck a month, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Is it worth private lessons once a week? Maybe. I feel like I'm bringing a lot of content. That's like 160 bucks a month worth of value. So please consider, um, you know, what, whatever you think this channel is worth to you. All right, let's keep going with the video though. And it's uh, Patreon or PayPal or Bitcoin or whatever. You can send a check to my PO box. I can get you that if you want. Mike's Music Method at gmail.com. But let's go. The key of G has seven notes, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then we're back to G. Now you can build a chord on all of those notes. I won't go into the theory, but trust me here, it's G major, A minor, B minor, so I'm building a chord on every scale degree, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, I'm doing the half diminished there, and then we're back at G. So, one. in other words, you can sing that do, re, mi, but you're just building a core, you're harmonizing everyone. So, instead of do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, we have do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. You're harmonizing all the notes of the scale to make either a major, a minor. The last one's always a diminished chord. Don't worry about that yet. What I want to tell you is that the one, the four, and the five are the foundations of all songs, whether pop or rock, certainly folk, certainly blues. So the one chord is G, right? That's our starting note. And then we go, if that's one, two, three, four, our four is this note. That note is a C. The four chord is a major chord. Again, don't worry about the theory, but the one, four, five are the major chords. One, two, three, four, five, that note's a D. D major, so we have G, C, and D. Any variation of that is going to be in a million different songs. So with your song, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that same melody. I like food. Yes, I do. Now we're going to go to the C chord. Here's our C chord. All that I'm going to play here is 5 to 4. Now the reason we're not skipping a string, 5 to 3, is because our melody includes that note and I don't want to clash where I have the th my bass line and my melody note on the same note. So here we're just going to go from five to four. So one of the reasons that you might, you know, I talked about going from six to four or six to three or six to five 
this is one of the considerations when you might switch it up because your melody note is gonna conflict and clash with that bass note. So here I'm gonna play my thumb like this. Now what you can do if you really wanna get used to this C chord, we're, we're still in the key of G, right? So we're still using these same seven notes, but we just change the chord, we're changing the harmony underneath the melody. So let's play through still the key of G, but I'm on a four chord, right? G, A, B, C. But I'm gonna play through the melody just like we did before. Kind of tricky with with the hand like this. So, do do is that third string open. Re is the second fret on that third string. I'm now using my pointer finger, right? Because I have to hold these two down for the chord. Then open on the second string. First fret on the second string. Third fret on the second string. Open on the first. Then you kind of have to, you know, tuck your elbow in to get that second fret on the first string. Then the pinkies down for the. Back, back to the beginning. You can do it backwards. Three, two, open. Second string is three, one, open, two, open. So we just played the G major scale, but our accompaniment was the four chord, was the C major chord. We could go up on G. And we can go down on the C chord. Again, just one way to practice a million rhythmic and melodic variations. But let's take our melody. I like food. Yes, I do. I'm going to do a stagnant melody. I'm going to repeat that melody, but I'm simply going to go to the four chord. That already sounds kind of nice. So G. it some some chordal interest even though our melody is stagnant let's go one more so a D chord here we want run into a little bit of a problem because our D is the fourth string and I mean we could go backwards four to five we could go four to three but if we do that we're we're clashing right I'm using that third string a lot for the melody so my my index and thumb are gonna be playing the same note and it's gonna lose the the bouncing bass line so what a lot of people do uh, John Prine, if you watch my videos, he does this all the time. Many players do this, though. Is we play a D chord, but we have an F sharp in the bass. So in other words, the D chord has three notes. D, F sharp, A. I know we're playing more than that, but some of them are doubled, right? This is a D, this is an A, this is another D, and this is an F sharp. So what I'm going to do, instead of going up to this A and having my thumb clash with the melody, I'm just going to put the F sharp down here so I can, can, can play this low string. So now it's F sharp to D, and those two notes imply a D chord. And we don't even need to play the, the rest of the chord because I'm just gonna play the melody. So you're free to use your thumb here, or you can put your, your middle finger here. I usually do the thumb. So I'm gonna do a melody now on this D, they call it a slash chord, D slash F sharp, just because it's D with an F sharp in the bass. But it's a D chord, just a different order of the notes. And I'm gonna play the melody over this. Kind of a little more dissonant, it's nice. Now let's hear it all in context. I got my G chord, my one chord, right? I'm starting on the first scale degree. Go to the four chord, which is a C. I'll go back to G. Then I'll go to the five chord, the D. And you got a little introduction to the song. Not the most exciting, but Surprisingly satisfying, given that the melody doesn't change. I'm very tempted at the end to change it a little bit. You know what I mean? Just to give it a little variation, the ear wants to hear it. little intro to a song and don't just use mine take your little melody try the same idea play it over the G chord 
play it over the C chord. Maybe you go back to the G or maybe you go straight to the D. And then to the G. However you want to do it, however you think your melody calls for, and keep the melody stagnant because I want this to be a very simple exercise. And hopefully what happens more times than, than not is you'll go, oh, you know what? Like on that C chord, it would be interesting if, if the note went up here or it stopped here or I ended it. Maybe you just end it on a different note, right? Instead of ending on that open G, oh, let's think. Maybe on the C, it just ends earlier. Sometimes just ending it early. Maybe you add an extra note. Whatever it is, there, there are endless possibilities, which what which is what makes songwriting such a joy and a creative process. But this is a lot to get you going, just that one, four, five with this melody, and you're just taking a simple melodic idea, very simple rhythm, don't overthink it. You know, one, two, and three, four. Do some kind of variations of just downs and ups. So maybe your melody, sometimes doing all downs is too simple. One, two, three, four, one, and I did two ends in there, right? One and, and. But it could be one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Right, give yourself a very simple rhythm, or it could just be like one, two, four, and one, two, four, and. Endless options. You could have it sparse at the beginning. One, two, and four, and. And four, and. kind of hard with the end at the end huh anyway you get the idea you can do this in a lot of ways and this is this is finger picking I don't want to um, belabor the point I think you guys get it but I would love to hear back from you if you came up with a cool little melody and you're happy with it, that you've learned it from this channel, uh, let me know. Email me, Mike's Music Method at gmail.com. And let me know how this went for you. Please comment below. This is a new kind of video for my channel. I, th I think it's super valuable um, when, I, when I give people this stuff in lessons. They tend to come up with cool little ideas and get an insight into like, oh, you know, this town song was always a mystery, like how this stuff goes together. How do you know to go to this chord and this note? It's really not that hard, right? One, the, the song is in a particular key, and you have a particular set of notes in that key, and it's up to you as the craftsman and the songwriter to put these elements together in an interesting and novel way. But there is, is a blueprint, right? It's not all guesswork. Um, Towns, Prine, Hurt, all of these guys certainly knew what, what chords were going in what key, at least the basic one, four, five. And if that seems like woo-woo to you, um, look it up. Like, you don't have to know the theory now, but look up what, what's a 1-4-5-5 in the key of G. Um, then you can learn the C major scale, right? I um, mean, you can go lower. But then you go, all right, what are the 1-4-5 in the key of C? Well, it's C, F, G. And all songwriting is 1-4-5, not all songwriting, but most is the 1-4-5, and then maybe occasionally you sprinkle the sixth chord in there in the key of G, G, A, B, C, D, E, right? That's E minor. So maybe you try that with your melody if you want to get real fancy. Get to work let me know how it went if you guys enjoyed this video i'm happy to kind of build on this and make more in in a kind of like picking songwriting series mike's music method you're gonna be a world-renowned guitarist